interesting discussions. David said, sincerity is the most important thing. That's what David said. We were 10 or 11 or whatever we were. And I said, no. Sincerity, this sounds strange coming from a young boy. I said, sincerity in the service of what? Being sincere in itself, you know, because Hitler was very sincere in the way he killed people. And so when someone, when someone murders someone, you can always assume that whatever the ineffectuality of his treatment of his victim, he was very sincere in desiring to kill him. So which word did you use instead what? of, well, your brother had sincerity. Did you have another word that would be worthwhile striving for in life? I, I didn't quite know, but I didn't think it's enough to be sincere. Uh, I think that you have to be sincere about something worth being sincere so about. So your work, your photography, well, for example. Well, I mean, I think that I was sincere in my desire to do good things. I was sincere in my desire to do good things but I truly have never been jealous. Mm. When I've admired an artist, when I've admired a photographer, I didn't allow my own, whatever you want to call it, to keep me from admiring such a person. When you see your, the body of work you have made, for example, at the exhibition in Hamburg, what do you think? When it's, it's a big time. I think of it's a life. lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah. I think it's a lot of stuff and I think some of it is good and I think some of it maybe I'm not quite sure but I am uh, in my paintings I very often think about certain things that maybe it needs more work sometimes when I see a painting in a frame I think this is not good we're going to have to take it out and rework it which I can't always do mm. uh I have a certain regard for my own work, but I also am a great admirer. I'm rather knowledgeable. I'm not an authority, but I know quite a bit about the history of art. And I know about the great people who achieve the most remarkable kind of things. And I think to myself that when I compare myself in relation to such people, that I need to be and I am modest about my own achievements. That doesn't mean that I'm not, that I'm worthless. When I was, when I lived with Barbara, I think I would sometimes, I was in my 30s, maybe, let's see, 58, yeah, 58, I was in my 30s. I would sometimes, when I t thought that I'd achieved very little, hmm. I comforted myself in the thought that I was young. The truth of the matter is that the work which people now admire and have some respect for, I had already done by then. And I didn't know that it amounted to whatever it amounted to. Do you agree with the fact that people like that work when you were 30 or young? Is it, is it the body of your work that you like yourself also very much? Or? Well, I think, you know, if some people are unhappy because Bouillard, after a certain point, began to become more realistic, less interesting. And I think to myself that if Bouillard had never done anything but the work from, let's say, 1890 to 1905 or 19s, that he deserves a place in the history of art. I don't look down on an artist whose best work occurred when he was young. That's much better than not having any work when you were young. Mm. 
if you are lucky enough in any period to have done something that is good, well, I mean, it would, of course, be nice if you went on from one heroic step to the other and conquered the universe and ended up a heroic figure. But that doesn't always happen. Mm. But we need to admire artists who, at certain points, so what, so what if Orson Welles only did, uh, what's the movie, Orson Welles? Orson Welles, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. What if he only did, so he was reprimanded for not having done other things, which sometimes people now, there, there's this other thing, people are accused of not, uh, there's a tendency for critics to admire a particular period in an artist's work. Someone like Howard knows who the signature works of certain people are. <laughs> what? The barbershop. <laughs> the barbershop. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> the barbershop by Walker Evans is one of them. But the point is, if an artist does, if a poet writes a poem, if a poet, if Baudelaire wrote one book, why didn't he write 10? I mean, there are writers who write a book every week. What's the matter with him? <laughs> one book? It may, however, be a book that occupies a role in the history of poetry. So why should he apologize for having written one book? Somewhere I read that uh, Turgenev, oh, I, for, I forget what's his name, the writer, the uh, writer who's also very famous. He was talking about Turgenev as not being on the top discussing literature, Russian literature. He's not among, he's not on the same level with Tolstoy. Mm. Doesn't quite measure up in some sense to Dostoevsky's madness or whatever it is mm. that he had. However, then you turn to another page and you read Turgenev's book is one of the greatest novels in the history of 19th century. So you ask yourself, you're slightly confused. Just a little while ago, you learned that he's not on the same level of these other people, but to have written one of the greatest books in the history uh, in, in is a rather impressive thing to have done. Of course, he was very civilized, unlike uh, Dostoevsky, and he was friendly with Henry James and Flaubert and all those people. So the point is that uh, you can't, you can't, oh, critics are sometimes also jealous. Mostly, I think. They could be, they mm. could very well be jealous because you know, they're dealing with people whose achievements may be beyond anything they can hope for and yet they have to find some area of comfort. So what are you gonna do? Mm. Did you ever respond to a negative uh, uh, review of your work or? I am very lucky. I have never been criticized. <laughs> <laughs> How could I no. ask that question, yeah. <laughs> no, what no one has ever told me that I'm a bad photographer, although recently someone wrote that my fashion picture lacked the poetry and the mystery of, of some other. Nevertheless, they were. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Yeah. Of some, but I've never been there. I once went to see an art director and he looked at me and he said, I wanted to see you. And I said, why? And I, th I thought you wanted to look at my... No, he said, I wanted to figure out are you a genius or not? 
I said, what do you mean? He said, well, someone told me you were a genius. <laughs> and how did he leave you? What was his conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> the conclusion was he didn't give me any work. <laughs> so, so I didn't. I couldn't quite decide what he thought I was. Not that I wanted to be a recently someone that I'm very fond of. <laughs> In this city, <laughs> looked at me and informed me that I am a genius. I can't tell you who it is. <laughs> we should know now. In this city, you're talking about Amsterdam? <laughs> I'm talking about Amsterdam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can the person stand up? He's probably here. <laughs> yes, he is here. <laughs> He's sitting in the first row. <laughs> uh, okay. Must be somebody who's selling your work then. <laughs> yeah. He has a good reason to say so. But he's right. No, I mean, he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm asking uh, way too much questions. How do you want to go about this? Do you want to tell about your work and the slides we have? Uh, do you want to uh, answer questions of the people who are here I and who love your work? Question. Look, I don't like to be interviewed. You see, We're I'm not doing an interview. I'm this is something completely no, I'm, different. I'm retiring from the interview no, business, no. but this is my swan song. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what this is, but it's definitely not an interview. <laughs> so just I know it isn't an interview. So if anyone wants to ask me a question, I would be happy to try. Perfect. Uh, I just have 39 little images. I just wrote them in quickly. Yep. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, that's a picture I took the first time I was in Paris, and there's something very Parisian about it. it certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> This I did on a walk with Soames, and it's called A Walk with Soames. We were taking a walk one day, and I remember when I took this picture. So I called it A Walk with Soames, and Margaret, who I was talking to, liked the idea, and so we called it A Walk with Soames. This is a photograph of the steps by the Tanager Gallery. It's a good example of, of using your own neighborhood <laughs> because it is a half a block away from where I... I had a studio in the building, actually. Is a lot of your work uh, from your neighborhood? A lot of my work is from my neighborhood, and it, uh, I decided at some point or other that you know, you didn't have to go to, you, you know, if you're an American photographer, you dream of travel, of seeing different places. And I realized at some point that just what is in front of you can be the subject of a beautiful photograph. This, I think I did, I had been reading a poet whose name I can't think of, it is Patterson. And uh, Barbara and I drove out somewhere, and on the drive, I took this picture. This I jokingly refer to as a Mondrian. I don't know, did I call it Mondrian work? Or there's something mm. about the uh, something did. about the boards and the way and the man. This was taken in Lanesville, where I went up for uh, one summer with friends. And it was a period when people, young women, were not burdened with shyness. <laughs> Very good for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the new, I've been asked sometimes, who are these people? What do they, and the truth of the matter is, I think that the nude is part of the history of, of art. From the very beginning of time, some of the earliest statues and things are of nude uh, women, nude men, nude, nude, nude. 
Uh, someone I know once claimed that the nude was a substitute for sex, that people who, and I don't think so. I think there's a difference between doing a photograph and being engaged in other activities. <laughs> they are not the same. Making love is not the same as doing a photograph. It just isn't. Maybe one could lead to the other. It doesn't have to. It's restful when it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. I very often, I very often, not very often, I did nudes and many of the, and people think there's an intense intimacy and there isn't. Of course, no one believes you because, you know, no one believes you. Mm. There is an idea amongst, someone asked me, didn't, oh, a lady in, in Hamburg, one of the questions was, do you believe that women and men can be no, uh, can not nudes, excuse me, <laughs> they can be nudes. <laughs> friends, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> they get friends. <laughs> she wanted to know whether I thought, which I think, mm. and I said, yes, I think so. It is highly possible that a man and a woman can be friends without sexual preoccupation. Now, some people find it impossible to believe. I happen to think that it's very, very possible because there are people in my life that I love and care about, but I'm not, especially at this a rather decrepit period in my life. I'm not busy imagining <laughs> making love to them. <laughs> because Strangely I enough, I have no follow-up question someone, now. <laughs> someone asked, oh, I want recently, I was invited by a friend who lives in my building to come to dinner, and she had a friend of hers <coughs> who was there, and this woman turned out before I knew it, and I, I, I was listening to her di discussing the fact that her first husband didn't care to sleep with her. <laughs> so I looked at her, and it occurred to me there were good reasons why. <laughs> but but I, couldn't, I couldn't say anything, you know, because... <laughs> It is rather mean-spirited mean -spirited to discuss <laughs> the deficiency in certain area yeah. as a result. I, I'm glad you took the story <laughs> to Amsterdam for us. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 I thought it was very funny because you're invited to dinner and you don't expect <laughs> <laughs> to go into someone's disappointment. But you, <laughs> you like these stories, I can <laughs> yeah, see that. Yes, I do yeah, like do. this yeah. story because there's something absurd about the idea of expecting dinner and learning that something comes with the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. <laughs> this is a picture actually of John Cage's foot under a piano. And John Cage, whom I met, he bought a painting of mine when I was very young. He and Merce Cunningham were in Pittsburgh, and they saw a little painting of mine with a frame, and it cost $10 with the frame, and they bought it. So I got to know him a little bit, and then I came to New York, and I took some pictures of him. And I liked him. I thought he was funny and amusing sometimes. He would knock on the door of my studio. And he had a klaxon, which is a kind of horn that comes from a very old car. And he would introduce himself by <laughs> tootling the, the klaxon. <laughs> and I, I would open the door, and there he was. Yeah. And he asked me what I thought of it, and I said, very interesting. <laughs> this is a picture. I think at this point people know that I like to photograph snow. <laughs> uh, 
And this is a picture that I rather, if I may say so, like. It's a, a photograph of a car in the street. And I snapped it at a, a rather nice time. This is an old lady who is toothless sitting in the subway. Now, some people would consider that maybe on the edge of not exactly cheerful happiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we found one picture at least. Yeah. Yeah. Soames used to refer to it as, as she called it my Goya. Mm. This <laughs> is a picture that I took one day in the street. This is a little boy looking out of a window during a very early period when I used the Graflex, which was a two and a quarter, three and a quarter square. This I did when Bob Weaver, Bob was a, a illustrator and I would sometimes walk and wander around together. And this was a photograph that I took in the L of the foot with all the other stuff. That man, I believe, I like it because you wouldn't guess who it is. I believe it is Duchamp. These are two women who, uh, nuns. I liked nuns a long time ago because they had uniforms and they had a look to them. I don't care for nuns who are wearing short dresses mm -hmm. with very unattractive legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Have you ever that, seen those? Uh, yes. Only I've in your seen, neighborhood, probably. Uh,